Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Oh, look at your puppy! He's so cute. Your puppy has three heads. They're cute heads. All right. I just want to pet each one and snuggle them up. Alrighty then. Also joining us today is Totera. I finally figured out what I was going to be for Halloween. Although I always got next year now. What do you want to be for Halloween? Cerberus. It's a, it's a costume that totally fits my giant Torterra size. <laughs> Alrighty then, but you still need to... Oh wait, no. What was the Pokemon that... Oh yeah, it's the uh, Dragon Pokemon with the three heads. Remember that one? Dragon Pokemon with three heads? Yeah. Don't you mean the Dotrio? The bird? That is also one of them. No, but this is a dragon. The black and blue one. Are you sure you're not mixing up a Pokemon with Godzilla? There is... There is... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm serious here. Like, there, there is that what dragon Pokemon three heads, like uh, one is the main head and the other two are like quote unquote his hands. Hydrogen. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Hydrogen. Yeah, hydrogen. Yeah, it was inspired by Gamora. Whatever that was it. Ghidorah. Ghidorah. Gamora. Gamera is a giant turtle, so I would yeah. I would chalk the Blastoise up to that more than anything. <laughs> yeah, I, well, King, King, uh, Ghidorah, no, I, King Ghidorah, I think. I, I can't say. It's not very threatening looking as a dragon. It was cute. It's cute. But I'm not feeling it. Yeah, I, yeah you know what? I, I'm more of a Blaziken guy. And also Blue Pony. And also, you know what? I've got to stop saying Pokemon names. Yeah, Renamon too. But anywho... <laughs> Uh, in today's episode, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic issue 82. In this issue, Rarity is tasked with giving Cerberus obedience training after he leaves his post at Tartarus again. So yeah, before we head into the comics, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, this is a fun comic, but it's also one that stops before you reach the full resolution. And so I was left away saying, wait, that's it? It's mostly uh, sort of a comedy of errors as you see both the main six trying to stop Cerberus and then Rarity's own efforts. And what a mess. Uh, uh, Yes. All right. And also, Tara, what do you have to say? I really like this comic. It's something that, you know, it's, uh, well, it's something I've never seen. I don't know if it's been done in previous, uh, episodes or comics, but I like the, the reasoning behind it and, you know, it has a nice story to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the story's pretty cool, by the way. Um, and anyway, before I carry on, uh, as for me, I, I like this comic. This comic is awesome, done by Tony Kusisko, who is Pencils. And yeah, um, art is always awesome. And I, I just love how the story is going through. It tells, oh, um, Rarity's the guy, perfect pony for this job, and so on, blah, 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 blah. Um, I, I do have to point out something. Uh, the writer for this is Kit Sharon, and she was responsible for uh, r- r- drawing for... Uh, issue 80. Remember that piece, guys? Uh, D&D? Yes, Ascending the Tower. Role-playing, cake hoarding. Yeah, she was she was the artist for that one. Aha. Uh-huh. So. So, art and, uh, and writing. Yeah. So, that that is fascinating. That, that, that surprised me for a bit when I first saw that. Like, wait, what? She, she did the art? Wow, okay. And she also does writing. You you don't usually see that in an artist. Like okay, except for Katie Cook, she usually does write and draw for her own bit. But here now, like they're separate. You usually see those kind of things when they're doing the same thing. Never the two shall meet. Rarely, actually, rarely. No, no, rarity. Bah. She's in this comic. She's somewhat of a central focus. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But anywho, uh, if you guys at home have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy it. And well, let's 
uh, join uh, come and join us and we will spoil the comic. Yay! <laughs> so anywho, we first start off with the comic in Ponyville. This is a really interesting view of Ponyville. I I I like it. I like it a lot. It shows the town from up high and we get to see a lot of uh Ponyville and how it looks from the sky. And I have to say this is really this is an interesting um view. Still, what do you think, man? Like what do you have to say? I'm not sure that is Ponyville. Really? I don't see I don't see any of the landmarks. Yeah, it doesn't look like Ponyville. Huh. Oh, okay. Well, there's none of the Ponyville landmarks. The buildings are at least three stories high. Whereas most Ponyville cottages only go two stories tops. Mm. And while well, there's a well, a river does run through it, but note that there's some Pegasus statue of great prominence in the center. This seems to be a larger town or city even. Hmm, you know what? Okay, um, I, I guess I'm so used to Ponyville being the center of um, chaos that I it never crossed my mind that it could be someplace else. Huh, all right. But funny thing about Tony's artwork is that he puts such amazing detail into the landscapes. It's a rare time where I might actually say there's too much detail. Like the scene where Cerberus is first on panel. Two heads are eating at the bushes and others looking down at this cowering pony. Look at how much detail is on the brickwork and the leaves of bushes, uh, the lines on the smoke and the f- fire on the pony's tail. Compare that to the ponies themselves. It's like high definition with low definition characters. But still, it's one of those things where Tony does work like that, and I appreciate his work for that because... It is really awesome. But anywho, carrying on. So we see the group. Uh, we see Cerberus there um, terrorizing a pony. And the main six come along and tries to stop him. I'm guessing it's a him, right? I have, I'm not brave enough to turn him over and check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, anywho. A uh goes in for the approach and tries to stop him. And Rainbow Dash tries to wrangle him, and you know what? They all fail. It, it takes them a few hours, but they manage to get him back to. No, they they don't. They they don't. No, well, someone else does that for him. Yeah, it, it seems that they fail, and it seems Celestia is uh the one that bring. Cerberus back to Tartarus and this is fascinating like it seems that Cerberus is Celestia's pet huh fascinating well I mean well I mean Philomena's off to the side like hey what about me what about me Uh, Philomena should be happy that she's not outside but anywho carrying on uh, we, we see that the uh what uh, Doggy is, is listening to Celestia and uh, Celestia tries to uh, recruit ponies into training or, or doing some obedient training for Cerberus. Uh, the first pony that Celestia pick and is most logical is Fluttershy. Well, Fluttershy says, yeah, sorry, I have to take care of the wild animals outside. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, and then so Celestia asks for Twilight. And Twilight says, Nah, I can't. I have some important friendship princess thing to do, unlike you. And Applejack says, Nah, Harvest. Princess Celestia says, Sorry, um, Pinkie Pie says, Can't babysitting all month. And Rainbow Dash just says, Nah, man, I'm Rainbow Dash. I don't do this stuff. <laughs> you should know it by now. And Princess Celestia goes to Rarity and asks, Rarity, can you do the job? And somehow Pinkie Pie screws Rarity over and somehow she gets the job. Thank you, Pinkie. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, what is it with the comics lately and Pinkie being this kind of Judas? <laughs> I don't know. 
Maybe, maybe they want to make Pinky unlikable? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, but Pinky, Pinky can be charming when you when you give her a chance. Yeah. But I, I, I think this is one of those situations where Pinky's on in, in on the bit. She, she's in on the bit and she knows what's going on. So she's playing along with So let's just plan and screwing Rarity over. <laughs> but anywho, I'm going to pause here. Silva, what do you think? I'm going to say Pinky's a Judas. <laughs> Betrayal. Although mark this day. It's a red letter day where Princess Celestia succeeded where the main six could not. Oh, happy day. Celestia is given some respect again. Uh, but if you really think about it, not really, because it's just her cleaning up her mess because it's her dog. Dude, don't take this away from her. I can. Let her have this. I can, because in the future, she's going to have her own TV show. Well, I'm afraid that's just wish, wishful thinking at this point. Yeah, she's... I mean, so we should know Norman has a lot of wishful thinking. Shall we go back to the whole Petunia incident? <laughs> no. No. Yes, he's wishing great harm upon her. He's like, why couldn't Cerberus eat Petunia? No, I didn't say that. Don't be Fox News. <laughs> so, Mr. Sanso, prove to me that you, that you don't want Petunia to live. I'm not saying you don't want Petunia to live. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> uh, maybe Celeste TV. That, that, that's something. CTV? Yes. Yeah, uh, okay, anywho. Tara, what about you? I mean, I can't really say much. I mean, you see, like, obviously, you know, you don't know what originally happened. So it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, we're in the middle of a scenario. But how this all happened? And then they explain through talking. And it's not like we see a flashback or anything like that. But it is nice to see Celestia do something. But I, I, I find it a bit funny how you see Celestia with the leash. It's like, yeah, let's go. I got this three-headed dog with me on a leash, you know, because I'm Celestia. <laughs> Yeah, there's that, that's, that's something cool, like magic leash. So he's having his dinner, which is really his breakfast that's been left out all day. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think supper. I, I think that's what Celestia said. No, 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 she says it's their supper time, even though their breakfast has been out all day. Oh, God. So the the, the servers didn't have breakfast. Oh, God. And now they're calling it supper. <laughs> uh, all right, then. Anywho, I'm going to carry on. So in the next morning... Rarity starts the training and Rarity has some rules on what to do and whatnot. And uh, let's just say that all of those plans are thrown out the window because Cerberus doesn't really listen to what Rarity wants to do. So Rarity thinks, okay, you know what, let's go for walkies. The dogs love walkies. And that was a big mistake because the dog runs around uh, causing... Uh, what you would call this harm to rarity and with that if with, with that training and whatnot uh rarity goes back to i got no idea where this is is it i, I guess this is not ponyville right and when she goes back to ponyville how much of the town do we see not much because we can see hoof much. cure pharmacy and men men's main saloon wow really no that's a that's an art combo but most of the buildings, it looks like, are indeed two stories tall, as opposed to the city we saw earlier. I, I guess it could be Ponyville. I think they're definitely in Ponyville now, but I was just comparing to earlier. But there's not a lot to which I can compare. I think they are in Ponyville because of the buildings. Okay. It, the, the architecture seems similar. But okay. So Rarity goes back to uh, go back home and tries to get her... Well, mean and tend to her bruises, but the main six discover, yo, it's Rarity. Rarity, how are you doing? How is the Cerebus training go? And she just says that, oh man, I can't do the job. This, 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 this job is way beyond me, man. Like, this is like hard. I, I, I got no idea. And Fluttershy just says, yeah, I mean, um, try Standing in front of a door for all day long. I mean, Cerberus is a very intelligent creature. And doing the job that he's doing, he gets he tends to get bored easily. So he tends to get distracted easily too. And Rarity says, like, what? He's intelligent? I don't see it. And But with that piece of info, Rarity somehow tries to... 
get back to the job and try not to be defeated by Cerberus. But it seems that she she's giving up and um, scolds Cerberus for not listening to her. Oh no, that that's terrible. That's terrible. And should I continue on or give you guys a chance to talk? Well, I, I think we can chime in on what we've seen so far. All right. Yeah. Uh, Tara, what do you think? Well, I, uh, how do I say this? Mm, like, I, I don't know how to say this, but I do like, though, how, uh, you know, because Ver, Verity's like, oh, yeah, you know, I can totally handle this. You cut to the next day. He's like, I can handle this. <laughs> and then it's kind of relatable how people, you know, they have their snapping points where it's like, oh, I can't handle this no more. I give up. But then someone else comes along and, you know, they have this perspective on things or they tell you, oh, you know, this is an important job or something like that. And then they come to realize it. It's like, huh, you know, maybe it's not so bad as I thought it was. And then, you know, they apologize for the person who's snapping at them and they get on, they get on with happy lives. All right. And Silva? Well, I guess the, the humor is seen a proud. There's nothing as funny as offended pride. <laughs> Rarity is very proud of herself and her abilities, but here's Service just walking all over it. In fact, that's the least he's done. <laughs> so to see her just losing it and even losing her uh, dignity in the process, it, there is some humor to it. But then when her friends all come and just have a giggle at her, I mean, especially Rainbow and Pinky, it's like, oh, come on now. That's not what friends do. At least not until the problem is solved, and then you can laugh about how awkward it was. So just like, ah, oh, the betrayal. How could you? Yeah, but they're just having fun. So mostly this is a humor romp. But the Cerberus getting scolded, that, that, that's pretty sad to see where he just pouts. Well, he pouts, but in some ways it, it's fully deserved. He is being a bad dog. But still, but still, um, we, we, I'm going to carry on, uh, unless you guys, uh, uh, unless you have anything to add. Well, I don't like seeing a dog unhappy, but sometimes you've got to, they need more discipline, and I think uh, Cerberus is being very undisciplined. I mean, there's, I think another reason too, well, I mean, first off, we don't know how old he is, but for all we know, Celestia probably didn't... Uh, discipline him at such a young age that's probably why he's like this probably but hey um this it's never too late to teach an old dog new tricks quite literally but anywho uh, let's carry on we see Fluttershy heading to Fluttershy's cottage trying to ask her to help with Cerberus but it seems that uh Cerberus is not sorry I'm <laughs> not Cerberus uh Fluttershy is not at home uh, because the fireflies tell her so. Oh no! And we see what the CMCs uh, coming to Fatisha's cottage, looking for Rarity, and Sweetie Belle is uh, telling the others that she is taking care of Cerberus and training her or him. And with this, uh, the CMC gives. Rarity and epiphany about how similar they are because both of them are uh, workaholics, hardworking characters, and sometimes doing something like that can tend to get you really bored. And with that, Rarity discovers, oh, she and uh, he and I are not the not not that different. And uh, Rarity. Decides to take notes and try to plan on something. Uh, the next day, we see Cerberus waiting patiently for Rarity to come and, well, play with him or either train him and whatnot. And it's high noon. McCree's somewhere telling the time. And uh, Cerberus kind of give up because, oh no, I, I, I did a boo-boo because Rarity's not coming. But hey, I, I'm wrong because Rarity's there. Why? Why did Rarity seem more? Okay, no, I don't care. So anyway, um, Rarity comes along with a bandwagon of toys and whatnot, and says that uh, you big pup, uh, working at uh, the gate of Tartarus is um boring for you, but 
uh, let me try and spice things up for you and we can make things fun for you. And so with that, Rarity trains Cerberus and plays with him and, you know, um, just make Cerberus happy. With that, episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think, man? When I first heard this, is wait, that's it? I know. She's just like, oh, we're going to play? How, how is this going to work going forward? Is she going to have to play with Cerberus every day, which adds to her responsibilities? Is she going to train another caretaker? Is Celestia going to appoint someone? I mean, uh, it just feels like it stops. Rather than having a proper resolution, it's got to stop. And it's just, well, I I wonder, could we have everyone gather again and reward Rarity on her innovation or express their pride, you know, not laugh at her misery? Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, when rereading this, I totally, fo- <laughs> I, I forgot how the comic goes. But after rereading it, I, I had that feeling of, wait, what? It ended here? Not even a few scenes of... Uh, Rarity and Cerberus playing. I mean, the the start of the ball throwing is one thing, but at least you want to see the payoff. I mean, or at least what? Um, have some kind of threat come down to Ponyville and Cerberus comes along and Rarity controls him. Like that'll be cool. And then she turns Cerberus all the others, and suddenly the reign of Empress Rarity uh-huh. begins. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Well, what what is up with Rarity and Beast controlling? Oh, that's. Um, re- re- that's Applejack from before. My bad. Doesn't work. Joke fail. Eject. Oh, abandon ship. <laughs> abandon joke. <laughs> but but anywho, Nor- Norman sent Tartarus <laughs> first. <laughs> but anywho, um, Silver, anything more to add? Well, I did love that the fireflies communicate through emojis. <laughs> that's the only way. I mean, at first I was, at first I thought it, they were saying W, but no, uh, it was a shrug emoji. I mean, that's the only way for uh, what you call this um, Fluttish, no, uh, for the Fireflies to communicate with Rarity. So, well, I guess they could blink more scope. Oh, takes time. But anywho, um, Tara, how about you? Well, I'm pretty sure we all had the same reaction while reading through the comics, because I also had the same reaction where at the end, I'm reading and she's like, alright, let's play fetch. And I see the words at the end and I'm like, wait, that's it? I guess there's a lesson here. Where it's like, you know, yes, there is a point where people, you know, have a snapping point and they'll snap at you and it can be a pet or an actual person. And, you know, once you cool off or someone tells you, you know, the scenario or, you know, tell you that you're in the wrong or so on and so forth. And it'd be like, you know what? Huh? Yeah, I never did think about it that way. So they go back to the person or dog and apologize to it. And, you know, I, I, feel, I feel like that's a good lesson. I, I totally agree with you on that. Like, uh, um... And also, Celestia here is a master planner because she planned this. <laughs> yes. Anything more to add, Tara? Yep. All right. And as for me, this comic was pretty okay. Um, the, the story, the lesson was really good. But it, this falls upon the category of not being memorable. I, I mean, I totally forgot how the story works and took me a while to get back to speed. Other than that, uh, the story, the book, is fine. It is fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. You're fine. We're fine. And well, I can't wait for next week's thing. Next week seems to be fun. Uh next week. Uh, what is happening next uh, week? Yeah, I, I, I don't have anything. Oh, clue sorry. Next week. Yeah, I mean the next issue. The next issue seems going to be fine. We got Detective uh, Twilight and Spike. So that's going to be fun. Ah, yes. On the case. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anywho, that'll be, that'll be future us um, problem, not us now. Uh, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Oh, sorry. No, I haven't mentioned what you're going to do next week. Yeah. We're going to do issue 83. Yeah. <laughs> you just said. Yeah, but that's for the comic review thingy part. Uh, this is for the episode review. You know what? Uh, since we're on a movie roll, I decide like we should do another movie. Oh. Yeah, I I mean, um, this is going to be painful for some, enjoyable for some. Which is? 
the the movie we're watching is uh, next <laughs> next week we are going to touch upon Miraculous World New York United Hero Z. Say what? That's a long title. Yeah, I know. That's the, that's the title of the show. Uh, we're going to review Ladybug. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Because I can, and it's fun. And you forgot about Hawk Moth the, when we review something. Uh, you said, oh, a ladybug-based villain. Oh, that never exists. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it'll be fun, right? And I'm, I'm sure I'll be screaming again. <laughs> uh, that, that, that one pays the bills. <laughs> Or lack thereof. <laughs> oh, boys. But, anywho. Goodness. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitter, social Twitter account is at the Mia Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norma Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill, where you can support my comics and videos via Patreon and Kofi, uh, just do a search for Silver Quill. And a uh, search for Silver Quill after the fact on YouTube shall produce my channel. And you can find me on Equestria Daily doing uh, reviews and editorials every Wednesday. Awesome, awesome. And Tara, what about you? Well, they can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome. Uh, also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, stay to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvlive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MPS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review, discussion, podcast, exclusive, and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about it and cues, I would like to thank Lucky Knight. Master of Leg and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, um, I, I never own a dog, so I got no idea how that feels. So, you two dog owner, right? Family's own dogs. I don't have one personally, but uh, my brother just add, added a new pup to our to our Ooh. collection. Well, collection sounds wrong. It sounds like a trophy. Part of our family. <laughs> Yay. So, so discipline training is going to be hard, easy, or send it to the shop? <laughs> a little bit of discipline is needed as it's a puppy energy and is a jumper. But he has also already learned sit and is adapting really well. He's getting along with the old our older golden rig. Oh, cool. That's good. And you, Tara? I do not have a dog, but my brother has three dogs in the middle. Oh, nice. That's cool. Sounds like... Oh, yeah. Sounds, sounds like fun. Sounds like you guys are having fun with puppies. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Never want a dog, so I've got no idea. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, no, no jokes here. I don't have anything creative to say. I start with... Not a word.